right. They're going to come down and talk to you and take care of you. That could have been done a long time ago. Do. That's it, man. Thank you. All right. We got his information? You don't want to give him his information. He just says his name's Justin. Yeah. We'll need to see your information. What's the Fourth sir? Amendment, sir? Pardon me? What's the Fourth Amendment? You tell me. You don't know it? Of course. My right to be free from seizures of my papers, persons, and effects. Hold on. I'm if right. If you do not identify I don't. yourself, I'm going to arrest you for obstructing governmental operations. So you're going to arrest me for not IDing? Yes. Okay, you need RAS. You need reasonable, articulable suspicion that I've committed a crime in order for me to ID you myself. Have prevented me from conducting. That's not how it works. Awful government you can't arrest me for resist. You can't arrest me for. I can't arrest you for resisting. Are you sure? No. Listen, you, you can't arrest me for refu refusing to ID. Can I get okay. your supervisor down here? I don't have a supervisor. Yeah, you I do. I need your supervisor down here because you don't know how, how things many, work. How many supervisors do you want down Someone here? that knows what's going on. Usually, I know what's going usually on. sergeants don't. Usually lieutenants do. So if you have a usually lieutenant around, sergeants don't know what's going yeah. on. Yep. So if you think you can arrest someone for failure to ID, that's a big no-no. And I need your lieutenant down here, please. That's a big no-no. He thinks um, as long as he's called, he's allowed to ID anyone that's there. And Terry versus Ohio is already a Supreme Court ruling that states that's not true. They need reasonable, articulable suspicion so of crime. Mean, so the only reason I don't want to give my last name, and I'm not saying I won't, but is for fear of retaliation. Uh, is this going to get over there to them? I went and filed a complaint on a sergeant yesterday. Huh? And ever since then, everyone has my phone number blocked. I've actually had to use a friend's phone just to call this number. Uh, it doesn't matter what, what precinct I call, doesn't matter if I call internal affairs, doesn't matter if I call the records department. Everyone else can get through, but my number can't. Why would that be, and who can I talk to about that? It's good to see you guys again. So I think the best way to start this video is to just read the email that I wrote to the mayor of Little Rock. It was obviously written after the fact, but it does a really good job of explaining everything that's happened up to this point. Here we go. Mayor Scott, my name is Justin and I'm a citizen of Conway, Arkansas. I have friends and family in Little Rock and I spend a lot of time in your great city. I truly love it here. However. When visiting your city hall, I am met with a strong resistance of transparency and accountability with both Quality Security and now the Little Rock Police Department. I was first there a few months ago attempting to get pictures of the beautiful building in the publicly accessible areas and was denied access specifically because I wanted pictures, which is a First Amendment violation. Luckily, I was eventually able to get escorted around by one of your personal security guards. He was very nice to do that for me. Last Friday, August 4th, 2023, I was in City Hall again attempting to get public records. The security refused to let me make my FOIA request and even called the police to try and have me removed. They don't like that I film. The police acknowledged I wasn't doing anything wrong and helped me get my FOIA request. They contacted the city manager's assistant, Rachel Brightweiser, who was nice enough to come down and help me before the police left they attempted to get my ID, and I politely refused. Sergeant Chad Stangy used unlawful intimidation tactics by threatening to arrest me in effort to violate my Fourth Amendment right several times. Once I requested his supervisor, he made a phone call, and when he came back, he claimed he never threatened to arrest me. I have everything on camera. That same day, I attempted to file a complaint with Sergeant Stangy's lieutenant, Lieutenant Cole, but was never able to talk to him. I tried again on Monday, August 7th, with no success. So I went to Internal Affairs on 12th Street to file the complaint. I spoke with Sergeant Greg Quiller, and ever since then, my phone number is blocked from all city-related numbers. I'm blocked from all police department office numbers. I'm blocked from calling any Internal Affairs number. I was given business cards by the city manager's office when I made my FOIA on August 4th and I am even blocked from calling their numbers or anyone else in City Hall. I was also told I would get a confirmation email from Sergeant Quiller the same day that he received my complaint I made in person and I never received any confirmation. I have all that on film as well. Tuesday night, August 8th, I was able to talk to a Little Rock City Council member about this and he talked to Chief Hinton. 
About an hour after Chief Hinton was notified, around 7 p.m., I finally received a confirmation from Internal Affairs Sergeant Quiller, long after his shift was over, and a whole day later, by the way. So for proof, here's a screenshot of the confirmation email I got from Sergeant Quiller at 8.03 p.m. And I should mention the dialogue for all these encounters was polite and calm from both parties. Other than Sergeant Stangy giving me unlawful orders and threatening arrest, no person was ever rude or raised their voice or was threatening in any way other than quality security. I would understand my number being blocked if I was calling repeatedly and harassing and threatening or something of that nature, but that never happened. I also have a few FOIA requests I have been trying to make to Little Rock Police Department and have been denied the ability to do so at two different police department locations on three separate occasions, all on film. I was finally just told to call the records department, but as I mentioned already, I am blocked from calling all city numbers. I was just provided with Assistant Chief Ellison's email, so I will send my FOIA request to him today. I would also like to send my FOIA request to you or Chief Hinton if possible, so I know they are being handled properly. If you think you can help, I'm willing to share any videos you are interested in seeing. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Justin M. So I did receive a response. Uh, says, good morning, Justin. Thank you for your email. My name is Taryn Cooney, Mayor Scott's con constituent relations liaison. I will share with Mayor Scott your experiences, but I wanted to put you in contact with Tom Carpenter, the city attorney. I think he can help you or possibly guide or point us in the direction of help. Thank you again for reaching out. And then I tell him thank you and any help would be greatly appreciated. Here we go. All right, we're at the Little Rock Police Headquarters. I'm about to file a complaint on Sergeant Stang for threatening to arrest me for failure to ID. Hey, is this where I would come to make a complaint on an officer? Actually, you would go to their supervisor. I, well... I don't need to go to a certain person. I need to come file it to an office. So it would either be here or maybe a different precinct. That's fine, but. Well, okay. What area did this happen? At City Hall. Okay. Do you know the officer's name? Sergeant Stang. That's, that's who the complaint is on? Yes. Okay. So this, let me find out where he works. Thank you. I tried to, but he never came. But did you talk to him on the phone? No. No? No. I asked the sergeant to have his supervisor come down, and then he left. <laughs> um, let me find out who his lieutenant is, and you can talk to his lieutenant and his major, and then go up the food chain from there. Is there not just a way to submit a complaint? You can always go to Internal Affairs. That's what I need to do. That's 12th Street. 12th Street? Okay. Well, if you can have him come down here, that would be fine, I guess. Internal Affairs won't come here. I mean, uh, the, the lieutenant or major would be fine. Well, I mean, we can, we can give you his number and let you talk to him. And you can ask him if he will come to talk to you here. So when I file a complaint, there should be a complaint form that I fill out and submit. And then that form goes to internal affairs for me to talk to his buddy doesn't seem like the way to do it well, it's not his buddy. it is they hang out and work together and it's them versus me and so oh, you know no i know how police work and i know they work together and he's not going to get his buddy in trouble because i said but i have it on film so i'm going to be able to prove it but i've never been anywhere that doesn't have a form that i fill out and then that form gets sent to internal affairs That's fine, yeah. It's there on the wall. And then, yeah, could you try to get the lieutenant down here for me, please? I'll, I'll give you his phone number. Can you call him since you have his phone number and ask him to come down here and speak with me? Sure. Thank you. Look at this. This is the Little Rock Police Department citizen complaint form. 
They want every phone number you have or have ever had. They want to know who your employer is, your address, your date of birth. Yeah, that seems like a smart thing. Hey, Miss Darlene. Uh, my name is Justin, and I just had a question about filing a complaint on an officer. Um, yes, sir. Would the proper way? So I was told the proper way would be go. It was actually a sergeant, not an officer. So I was told okay. I should report it to his lieutenant. Okay. Would, is it? Or is it a, uh, a person? Is this one person up for the city of Little Rock? Yeah, he's the he's a sergeant at the twelfth street division for the little rock police department okay do you have a name um chad stangy okay give me just a moment okay sure Yeah. Okay, thanks for holding. Let me get some information regarding you. Can I get your first and last name? Um, I don't think I need to do that to file a complaint. Well, um, do, I? do you need to speak to an investigator? That's the way there it's investigated. Is it? Um, I mean, I, I've filed complaints before and I haven't had to give my name. But, um, I mean, I could do it anonymously. I can file a complaint on anyone anonymously, right? Okay, so you just so we'll just go with John Doe. You can put Justin. I don't. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a callback number? Um. Would it be easier? See, I'm not trying to just give you guys a bunch of my personal information and then I never hear back from you and nothing gets done. Um. What my my main concern is that this sergeant gets trained properly because it sounds like he's out there violating people's rights on a daily basis. And so my information okay. isn't important. It's him getting trained properly, and I have it all on video of him being okay. very well, confident sir, about well, not give knowing. Give me just a moment. Let me see if I can just want to speak with you. Would it be I can't get any hey, information, okay? Would it be better if I just came straight to the Twelfth Street Division and talked to his lieutenant, or what would be the best way for this to work so he gets retrained properly? Well, if you're filing a complaint, this internal affairs, and you want to talk to his lieutenant, which is his supervisor, then you can go to Twelfth Street. Okay, so, well, the only reason I bring up speaking with the lieutenant is because another officer told me that the proper way to do it would be to go speak with his lieutenant. But if you're okay. saying the proper way is to do it with you, that's what I... No, I'm, not, no, I'm saying that's what, those are your options. Not, not the proper way. We're here to take complaints from citizens regarding foreign personnel in the city of Little Rock. Um, so when you're, if you call me, I'll take the information down. I'll get you to an investigator. That's how the process works here. If you would like to go speak with your supervisor first and maybe try to get something rectified there, you have that option as well. Gotcha. I would rather speak with you guys. Um, and I wouldn't mind. Would it be okay if I came up there in person? Sure. That's perfectly fine. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate you. I'll see you soon. Um, I was told you're across the street from the 12th Street Division. Is that correct? At, at the Willie Hampton building on the second floor. Willie Hampton, second floor. Mm -hmm, yes, sir. Awesome. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, yes, sir. So I'm here at Internal Affairs in Little Rock to file a complaint on Sergeant Stangy for threatening to arrest me absent a crime. Told Internal Affairs is on the second story of this building. Hello, I, I need to. Um, I need to go to Internal Affairs. I'm told it's on the second story. I'm just yes, upstairs, straight ahead. Hey, I'm Justin. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry. Rick Lord. Oh, thanks. Sorry. Um, I needed to make a complaint on a sergeant for the Little Rock Police Department. Oh.
pull. Yeah, the same one, grab it. Take the paper, grab it. Thank you. And I just recorded everything. I hope that's all right with you. It's so nothing personal. I take it wherever I go. That's why I got this here. Okay, so, yep, I got it queued up and ready to answer any questions or. Oh, let's, 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 what's the next? Just kind of. Oh, oh, yeah. Said what was going on? Yeah, so uh, I was in Little Rock City Hall on Friday. And uh, long story, I don't mind getting into it, but long story short, the police were called and he wanted to identify, well, very long story short, he threatened to arrest me um, if I didn't show my ID without there being a crime present. So he was actually on his way out. There was no crime that I committed. He never even accused me of one. He was leaving. Uh, it was a sergeant. He was leaving until he found out that the officers didn't get my identification card. And then he threatened to arrest me if I didn't let him have my identification card. So. There's no crime. I have him on video saying that there doesn't have to be a crime to get my ID. He thinks um, as long as he's called, he's allowed to ID anyone that's there. And Terry versus Ohio is already a Supreme Court ruling that states that's not true. They need reasonable, articulable suspicion so of the you're, crime. Your first, your city hall. Yep. Would, like if something happened, would you, would you have to? Yeah, yeah. So, well, I mean. I mean, is this is like a first move out of your thing. Yeah, it absolutely okay. is. Okay. You know what that is? I, I see it. All right, so that saves me a lot of yeah. explanation. So that's a whole story within itself because um, they wouldn't let me in there. And I was just trying to get some public information. And they ended up calling the PD down there um, to try to get me to leave. Somebody in City Hall called Yeah, the uh, quality security. Okay. Um, and so they called two officers, which I have their cars, uh, Perkins. Which they were cool. I'm not trying to. I don't need to make any complaints on them. Um, but then, uh, so if I if I can understand that, so your complaint is that you were threatened with arrest if you did not produce. Long the story case. short, that's what the complaint is. So is. You, you said that you would not submit to a crime, so therefore you would not submit to ID. Absolutely. And he and what scares me is that he's a he's a sergeant. And he's saying that stuff in front of officers. And so that I guarantee you they're taking that like it's gold. And so it's spreading a disease within the, the department that they think they can ID anyone they want. So how many people's Fourth Amendment rights are being violated every single day because of sergeants like him teaching that to officers? And if he's that confident, and I have him saying it two or three times on camera. What was the sergeant's name? Uh, Chad Stangy. It's S T A. N G E and his um, badge number should be 33541. When, when did this happen? Friday, uh, about 3 p.m., between like 2 and 3. Did they give you an incident for this? Event? This was actually, I would say, more like between. Um, the actual incident with Stangy was between like 3 and 3.20, just to give you a little more pinpointed. And then the incident number for the call that the, the, call that the, that security, the security made, yeah, yeah, I believe is, oh, that's that one. Maybe on the back of the card. I bet you it's that, yeah, 2023. That's is that not it? Had that well, that's the year. We put the year oh. for everything. Is, is that going to be so it then? I, I, I asked him to write it down. I'll look uh, it up. Let's see. If not, I'll go through steps to look for it. Appreciate that. Sorry. And then he also admits at one point, just in conversation, that he thinks he can arrest somebody for resisting arrest, which doesn't even make sense. Because you have to be something already arrested, arrested before you yeah. resist the arrest. And he says that on camera, very, uh, very confident as well when he says it. So I think he needs some retraining. Well, that's not for me to decide. I, I just evaluate. Oh, yeah. I just evaluate no, oh I understand. I'm I just, just that's, your, that's my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, all right. So in order to file a complaint with someone, uh, we ask that people fill out the complaint form. Okay. Uh, I can't demand you have ID or you identify yourself. But if you I'll give you my name. That's cool. Like, okay. So, yeah. This first document just says that 
this is a, a quite formally signed statement saying that uh, basically anything you're telling us is the truth. You're not saying making a false allegation or a false statement against an officer to get the person in trouble for, without cause. Absolutely. And yeah. uh, that's I just need a signature here. If you want to review this, it basically says that you, false swearing or giving false information, uh, you can't be subject to criminal allegations if, you, if you're doing it intentionally with the purpose of you know, be, being false. Okay. Uh, so a signature there, a date there, and I will witness it there. Okay. And then, um, if you'd like, I have it queued I'll, up. I'll get that. Uh, While I'm doing this or yeah. whatever. And then I. Um, well, I'll probably have you email that to me. Oh, sure. That way yep. we don't think I can. Even better. Anything. That way you can just watch it. Okay. Oh, okay. Was today the seventh? Seventh, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the form here. We have this complaint. We have a public complaint. Uh, like I said, it's all up to you. Name, okay. address, phone number, uh, employer, which I don't really, not really necessary. Uh, it's a date, like where it occurred, time, location. A brief summation of your complaint. Okay. But you've already described that you know you demanded ID, threatened with arrest, yes. and you committed a crime. Uh, I would feel all the involved officers. You should actually say it's only against the officers that are starting standing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we'll put him there, uh, put the other officers down as witnesses, and then I would just make the, a date signature from you saying that you wish to proceed with the complaint. Okay. Cool. And all this stuff will go in the file. You know? nice. So the only reason I don't want to give my last name, and I'm not saying I won't, but is for fear of retaliation. Uh, is this going to get over there to them? Well, it depends. So some information in files is subject to FOI, uh, so it can be released. Okay. But if the office, usually it's officers have to receive uh, the motion, suspension, or termination in order for the whole file to be released. But there are portions of the file that are mixed record, so it can be released. But I, then people do get access to the complaint form, so somebody can publicize it. Uh, if, so if you wish to keep everything okay. quiet, you can't. You can't. Now, um, there is a, we do send everything out by mail. They, uh, they do send like a certified letter at the end of the complaint showing everything. So they would need an address, or I guess you could, if you could, you probably put a postal box there. Or you maybe uh, put an email on there, and maybe they try to do it that way. In Conway, they were able to just do a copy of that and then send it, send it to my email. Yeah. So, so if you want to step in all that, you just want to put your email off to the side, we can probably do it that way. Okay, cool. That'll work. Uh, flexibility. You don't have to be everything standard. I'm just going to put my last initial for now, but okay. if it comes up that I need to give it to you, I'm not against it. I just, I did, uh, for fear of retaliation. Uh, only thing I ask is that you provide some contact numbers so we can call you if we need to ask sure. further questions. Okay, yeah. Put my mobile phone. They didn't want to take it from me. I don't want to take it The headquarters down there, um, right next to City Hall. Did you talk to an officer or supervisor? Yes, the lady behind the counter. And it didn't no, go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't take it as anything. I well, I, I do because like civilians can't take the plates, officers can't take the plates, but supervisors can. Okay. So that's why it makes a difference on who you talk okay. to. And then I didn't address that. You know. She did say I should... Uh, where is it? It don't matter. Yeah, and okay. I tried to get a hold of him a few times, and that's and I, I couldn't ever get through. So oh, that's why I'm there's a limited supervisor down there, so I probably yeah. nice. But if you get everything filled out there, we can Let me make sure I'm, I'm good with it real quick. I don't know what the district was. But. Uh, we'll fill all these things, not fill the okay. basic options. Fill that with your uh, with your email, so we have some way to provide you with the. Well, 
What I may have to do, because it is like a 45 minute video, I don't know if I'll be able to email it. Um, I might have to upload it to YouTube, and then, which I'm not even gonna do it as one of my videos, I'm just gonna, it's just gonna be just for you, and I'm gonna give you a link that you can view it on. Would that work? Yeah, that that way it's uncut, I'm just gonna put it there and then send just you that link, that way you're the only one that can see it. And I, I, we might be able to download it, zip it, drive it, zip it. So. Yeah. But I don't think it'll fit in the email, so. No, not 45 minutes worth. Yeah. And then, I mean, I don't mind cutting it down, but then you don't have the whole, you know, then I don't want, I don't want to seem like I'm cutting it. Yeah. Right, so. I don't understand. Uh, I already forgot. The seventh. Yeah. Seven. <laughs> And that's that. And that's that. All right. So will I get? I'm gonna send that email to you. Is there? Am I gonna get a confirmation? Of, yeah, I'll say I received okay. uh, the link and stuff like that. How about after the investigation is over? Will I get any kind of information? That's out of my hands. So once I do my part, I send it to Chief's office and determine whether it's gonna be what type of investigation is gonna be done, internal investigation or divisional investigation. But once that's done, it goes back to Chief. Once he makes the final determination, then he will have the. Uh, Chief's office sent out a letter. That's an outlet. That's an outlet. Which, in this case, they'll probably try to send you via email. Okay. But that's the one you'll see. Uh, you'll receive the information on it. Awesome. Okay, cool. So, and if you have any questions, you can always just call and ask. I got your number. Yes. All right. Thanks, Gary. Right. Appreciate it, brother. <laughs>
So what's the hold up? <laughs> uh, you want to get video footage? Yeah, I need some body cam footage, please. Okay. Yeah. And I'm so if there's a process you have to go to, if you want video footage. It's a four-year request. I can do it. Actually, so I can do it. F- you talking about FOI request? Yes. Okay, that goes through headquarters. I can do it. I should, I should be able to do it here. You cannot. 615 West Markham. I, could, I should be able to do it here. I should be able to verbally say it to you, honestly, but I'll write it down. Ma'am, what's your name? What's her name? What's your name? Will you, will you please identify yourself? Hey, these people need to learn, man, I swear. Why is Little Rock so terrible with the public? Hey, excuse me, officer or sergeant. Uh, can you tell me her name, please? Hey, excuse me. Excuse me. Can you come here for a second, please? All right. First of all, can I get your name, please? My name is Cadet Jacobs. Thank you. Now, can you please tell her that if she doesn't tell me her name, I'm going to walk across the street to Internal Affairs and file a complaint on her? Because I know it's in your policy to identify just like you did. Right. Thank you. I just came from there. I'll go right back. Yes, ma'am. I'm Evans. Thank you. That's all I needed. Fucking dude. So instead of messing with that rude lady Evans, I decided just to come down to the headquarters and do it here. It was only like five, six minutes away. Hey, what's up? I need to do a FOIA request that I should have done while I was here on Friday. Okay, a what now? A FOIA request? request? Yeah. You Freedom of information? Happen? Thanks. I got three of them. Well, it's actually just body cams. It's three different body cams. Are you trying to pick them up? I'm trying to, uh, no, I'm trying to request it now. Request it yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh no. So uh, you may want to come back tomorrow when they're open hours. Um, is there a way to just do it online? Do you happen to have a website? Uh, or? I, have the, I can give you their phone numbers. I don't know that you can do it online. I'll grab a phone number from you. All circuits are busy. Please try. Bro, what the fuck? So it doesn't matter what number I call, whether it's the front office to the headquarters of the Little Rock Police Department whether it's the number directly to the lieutenant, whether it's the records department, whether it's uh, internal affairs, they have my number blocked. And I've 
I've called many times with my number and it always says as you've probably seen uh, all circuits are busy but anyone else calls any of those numbers and it rings and, sent, and they get through immediately I've already had two other people do it on my behalf real quick just to see and uh, so now I'm about to do it with another number how dirty is that See how it gets through? They don't answer it, but it at least gets through when I call with a different number. Sergeant Quiller, I spoke with you yesterday. My name is Justin. Uh, I made a, I filed a complaint on uh, Sergeant Stangy. Ever since I gave you my number and my email, I have not received a confirmation that you got my link, and my personal number has been blocked on all telephones, whether it's your your phone, uh, whether it's the head office at the headquarters, whether it's the number to the lieutenant whether it's the records office, you guys have blocked my phone number ever since I've filed a complaint. Um, very telling of what's going on up there. I would appreciate a call. Thank you. So no matter what number I call, whether it's the records department, the, the front desk of the police department, no matter which, uh, no matter which precinct it is, no matter whether, no matter whether it's internal affairs, um, they have my number blocked. The day after I made the complaint. All circuits are busy. Please try your call again later. Announcement 8. All circuits are busy. Please. You're currently located at 16 West Markham Street in Little Rock, Arkansas. Please listen carefully as our options have changed. If you would like to make a non-emergency police report over the telephone, press 1. If you're trying to obtain a police report or accident report, press 2. To reach the non-emergency dispatch, press 3. Wait while I transfer your call. What are communications, sir? Hello, um, is there a way for you to transfer me to internal affairs? So, well, here, maybe you can help me. Um, I went and filed a complaint on a sergeant yesterday, huh? and ever since then, everyone has my phone number blocked. I've actually had to use a friend's phone just to call this number. Uh, it doesn't matter what, what precinct I call, doesn't matter if I call internal affairs, doesn't matter if I call the records department. Everyone else can get through, but my number can't. Why would that be, and who can I talk to about that? I can get a sergeant to call you. Um, which district did you put the complaint in at? What I could do is I could give you the police station phone number, or I can get your contact information and reach out to a lieutenant myself and have them call you. So my number is blocked no matter what number. I've called literally six different numbers. Um, can they reach <laughs> you on this phone number? For a little while. It's not my, it's not my phone, so... Because I can... I can reach out to a sergeant once we disconnect and have them give you a call. Could you do a lieutenant, please? Or that's what I meant, I'm sorry. Yeah, and I can hang out for a little bit. Okay, and what is your name? Justin. And the 3272 is the number? Yeah. Alrighty, I'll, we'll reach out to a lieutenant right now, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see if I get a call back. I bet I don't. 
To reach the non-emergency dispatch, press 3. Wait while I transfer your call. Communications, this is Baker. Hello, um, I called a minute ago. Uh, I spoke with a lady who was supposed to be getting a lieutenant to give me a call. Um, is there a lady there that might know what I'm talking about? Um, what, what the address, what was, blah, 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 blah. what was the address you were calling about? I'm sorry. There's no address. Um, no? are you, uh, are you a law enforcement officer? I am not. I'm just dispatch. You're dispatch. Is there a lady there that usually answers the phone? There's a lot of ladies here. Goodness. Okay. That sucks. So I'm pretty much screwed. Well, what I called about was, so I filed a complaint on a sergeant yesterday, and ever since I did, um, my my phone number is blocked by everybody, by internal affairs, by all your. I'm having to use someone else's phone just to get through. That lady I spoke with a little, about 30 minutes ago said she was going to get someone to call me immediately, but um, I'm betting you nobody does. Well, if you give me a second, I can see if somebody can, if somebody here took your call. Thank you. Yep, one second. Justin? Justin? Okay, one second. Mr. Justin? Yeah. Okay, so I was told you have to reach out to the front desk officer and they will direct you to the right sergeant. Um, uh, the no number one. is 371-4605. 4605, yeah. They don't, I've already called them multiple times and nobody answers. But. This is Little Rock Police Department. I wouldn't work there anymore if I was you, dude. They're crooked, and this is how they act. Have a good one. So, I've, I'm even blocked from calling any numbers at the City Hall. Please try your call again. I can't even call the City Hall. The lady who I spoke with, uh, who let me fill out the FOIA, um, when I was in City Hall, she gave me her card. I can't even call it. How fucking crazy is that? <laughs> Gotta use another phone just to call City Hall because I filed a complaint and tried to get public information. You've reached the desk of Rachel Brightweiser, Executive Assistant to City Manager Bruce Moore. If you will please leave your name and your number, I will call you back as soon as possible. Thank you. Bye-bye. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. Hi, Miss Rachel. This is Justin. Um, we met on Friday. I was in City Hall trying to request some public records. You were the nicest one in the building. And you came down with some paper and let me fill it out. Um, did what everyone else should have done in the first two minutes I was there. So uh, I very much appreciate you. But ever since then, um, so that was Friday. Monday, I went and filed a complaint on the sergeant that threatened to arrest me for failing to ID, which would be a Fourth Amendment violation. And ever since I did that, my phone number has been blocked. Even like I can't even call your office. I have to get I have to use someone else's phone to call you or any precinct of the PD. I can't call internal affairs. can't call any number at City Hall. Um, and this all happened literally hours after I made my complaint in internal affairs, uh, which was uh, Monday, yesterday. So um, that should scare everybody. Um, that's very scary. So if you could give me a call back, I'd love to set up an appointment with the mayor to get to the bottom of this. Um, someone is scared of me exposing them or they're hiding something i don't know um i don't want to make any accusations quite yet but uh 
please give me a call back at my cell phone number or my email if you could reach out. I know that you have that because we've already confirmed um, that you received my FOIA through my email. So I appreciate you and looking forward to hear from you. Thanks. Bye. So I was making some phone calls earlier and uh, I was finding out that my phone number is blocked all over Little Rock. Um, whether it's the police department, internal affairs, the city hall. And um, I didn't show the number I was calling on video. So just to make sure I have real proof, um, I wanted to show the video, the number I'm calling and what happens. So first, I'm just going to call Slim Chickens. Hope you can see this. It's a, in Little Rock. Just another number, just so you can see it's not my, it's not my phone. I can call anyone else I want to I can call anyone I want to except for any type of city office in Little Rock all of a sudden it started today yesterday was fine so it's ringing look I'm not even going to I don't mean to bother them uh, so I'm sorry slim chickens in Little Rock that was me but I just wanted to show that it rings immediately there's no big deal um, and then, so let's just go to my recents. Rachel, um, she's the lady I talked to in City Hall that helped me out. So here's her number, 501-371-1000. Uh, um, Please don't call and bug her or anything. She's really nice. Um, but so she's, so 501-371-4803. So I hope you can see this. And this is what happens if you didn't notice earlier. It's this is happens every time. It's silent and doesn't ring for a good 20 seconds. All circuits are busy. Please try your call again later. And Announcement eight. All circuits are busy. Please try your call again later. Announcement eight. So that's what happens. And just to show you, so here is the sergeant I talked to at Internal Affairs, his number, uh, 501-918-4290. So let's go ahead and call that just to show you. 501-918-4290. Same thing is going to happen. All circuits are busy. Please try your call again later. Announcement 8. All circuits are busy. And then just for one more, just to show you, um, how about the uh, Little Rock Police Department, the 12th Precinct um, at 3917 West 12th Street, or the 12th Street Division, I'm sorry. 501-918-5130. Uh, Let's see. So I have all these numbers in my uh, recents. I'm trying to call them today, so it's... Hope you can see this. All circuits are busy. Please try your call again later. Yeah. Announce so that's what happens when I call any city office in Little Rock starting today. Um, yesterday is when I went and made my complaint on Sergeant Stangy at the Internal Affairs Office with Internal Affairs Sergeant Greg Quiller. Um, and ever since then, um, he never emailed me back. Until after I got my message to the chief, he finally emailed me back, uh, what, 7-something p.m. today saying that he's been 
um, working on my case all morning, but hasn't been able to open my email or whatever since nine o'clock this morning, but never got back to me. I've even emailed him twice after that initial asking him what's up and he didn't email me back. Um, even when I called his office and left a voicemail, which is on video, um, on another person's, uh, telephone cause I, I couldn't use mine. Uh, he still didn't get me back. So I finally got a hold of a city council member who I told my story to, and then they passed it on to the chief of police. And then it wasn't, you know, 30 minutes to an hour later, I got an email back from internal affairs, Sergeant Gregory, uh, Greg Quiller, Q U I L L E R, um, saying that he got my email. So he, uh, definitely, um, wasn't, he's not here to help. He is on the police's, I thought going to internal affairs would be the better bet um, because they aren't even in the same building, but nope, they're just as bad as the PD and they all work together. So wish me luck.